So let's talk about the crystallinity and the unit cell. And today we'll be discussing solids, specifically how to deal with solids and what solids look like. And so we discussed in uh, previous chapters uh, the structure of solids briefly. We discussed that they were uh, very tightly packed, that the molecules were very tightly packed, and so therefore they have very high intermolecular forces. And so uh, we didn't try to really differentiate between the different solids. We really talked about gases and uh, much more, and to some degree liquids. Uh, but as you can see from your own anecdotal uh, evidence that different solids behave differently. Not all of them are hard, not all of them are uh, soft. Uh, some of them can break easily and they're very brittle. Some of them have uh, more give. And so how do we uh, justify the fact that different solids behave differently uh, and the fact that they don't all look like this and behave like this or how you might, might imagine? And so the, the, there is a difference, say, for example, between a, uh, a milk jug, which is a solid, and um, a metal, which is also a solid. Uh, and so how do we differentiate between them? So let's, let's look at their structures. Uh, so what you could see, uh, basically, in this red picture here, uh, that I have a very nice repetitive structure there. Uh, and so I call that crystallinity. Uh, and so crystallinity, that means it's, it's repeating, it's periodic, uh, it's uh, very much uh, predictable what the structure will be uh, given one little area in like, let's say for example, that cube again, if I give you just one tiny little area set top, you could say probably it's gonna look the same at the bottom uh, because it's, it's uh, predictable and repeatable. Uh, whereas there are uh, some not crystalline solids, uh, we call them amorphous, uh, where there's very short range organization, if any at all. Uh, and those are more typical of things that are like plasticky and uh, like, like polymers, okay? Uh, and so we can, we can kind of calculate what percent of uh, crystallinity we have, that is what percent order we have in our solid and the higher degree of crystallinity, the harder the metal will be because it's, it's, uh, it's, it's more predictable that it will be having a more closely packed structure. Uh, and the lower the crystallinity is, the more amorphous the solid is, uh, the, uh, the opposite is true. You, you're going to have things that have more give in their structures, and they're going to have um, a lot less uh, organization, a lot less um, hardness, uh, et cetera. Okay? Uh, to describe crystallinity, uh, we're going to use these things uh, known as lattice structures. And we're going to basically say, so I have a hand-drawn picture here of, this, of a lattice. Uh, and you can see I have uh, spheres here. They represent uh, atoms. And basically, what we're going to do is we're going to say that the, this thing repeats. Okay, so let me just um, uh, switch over to my little piece of paper here. So basically, you might say to yourself, well, let's say I have a solid, and I'm going to look at it uh, as a 2D scenario. I have a, a solid like right here, okay? And I'm going to just draw out something that's repeatable and easy to see, something like this, for example. Uh, okay. And so I might say um, I can have a sampling of this and decide what, uh, what is the representative structure here, okay? So you might say, well, why not just take this thing, the one of the circles, say this one, and say, this is gonna be your representative structure. Uh, that might be true, but if I'm only looking at this and saying that everything looks like this, then I don't know um, if the next uh, circle is gonna be directly below, is it going to be diagonal to it? Um, is it going to be maybe going to have two of them like that? I don't know. Just looking at this, it's too zoomed in. Okay. I can also say, okay, my representative structure will be something like this. And that's probably true. If I copied and pasted the red box, the big red box over, it's going to have the same exact structure in it. So that's a good representation of a repeating structure but it's a little too zoomed out because I can see a structure, a, a pattern 
much more, much, much uh, more zoomed in than that. So you go somewhere in the middle. And so probably a good one would be maybe a, a circlet uh, like this. Maybe this is a good structure to repeat. Maybe uh, like this is a good structure to repeat. Whatever it is, you, you, you select your own unit. We call that a unit. And if we repeat the unit, we can just kind of copy and paste, copy and paste, like on paint or something like that. And we can get the entire structure of our solid. That's the idea behind what we're doing here. Uh, so let me just go back to the slide here, okay? So that's, that's the idea. That's what we're gonna call a unit cell, what I just described to you, that the, 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 uh, the minimal structure that we can just copy and paste and get what we need, okay? Those are called unit cells. And so for crystalline structures, we're going to have um, this unit cell business uh, repeat uh, much more easily. Okay. Uh, so uh, I can have the, I showed you a 2D picture, obviously, it will be a 3D picture. Uh, so let me show you uh, the, some common unit cells. Uh, these are some of them. We're going to focus more on this one in the hexagonal. Uh, and so, but you can have a unit cell where if you copied and pasted it, the angles don't necessarily have to be 90 everywhere. It could look like this or whatever. This, this whole thing, this whole shtick is known as crystallography. There are some scientists and engineers that study this kind of thing uh, in material science. And they, uh, they, have, they have instrumentations that uh, can classify, it, that you could put up a sample underneath uh, in, that in, in, the, in the instrument, and it will tell you uh, based on the data, uh, what the angles are, what the representative length of each one of these unit cells, you can get a lot of information out of it. And that's, that's how a lot of this is done uh, at, at, at this time. Uh, in the past, it was not done that way, but uh, we, we have these, these instruments to do that. So there's a whole lot of science in this, but we're gonna focus more on cubic and hexagonal and even more so on cubic, but I'll, I'll discuss the hexagonal. Uh, as well. We'll focus on three types of unit cells. 